I'm joined now by Ben Crump, the attorney for George Floyd's family. Mr. Crump, uh, good to see you, sir. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. Um, the family had been calling for those, those three officers to be charged yesterday. They were charged when they saw those mug shots for the first time yesterday. What was their reaction? Uh, they had a sense of relief, Craig. They were very thankful to Attorney General Keith Ellison for expeditiously doing what they called for on day one and to arrest everybody who was involved with the killing of their George. You and, and, and the family, you've said from the beginning uh, that you wanted a first-degree murder charge. Uh, yesterday, uh, a second-degree murder charge was added to former officer Chauvin. Are you still convinced uh, that he committed first-degree murder? George Floyd's family and many others, including myself, believe the charge should be first degree. However, we're relieved that uh, Keith Ellison upgraded the charges to second degree. We believe that he had intent based on what we heard from the police body cam audio when the one officer said he has no post. Maybe we should turn him on his side. Officer Chauvin said no. We are keep him in this position and stayed on his neck for three more minutes while he was unconscious. These protests uh, that we've seen play out in, in our country, around the world actually, but these massive protests here in the United States of America, do you think that we would see the charges that we saw against those officers uh, yesterday and perhaps even the added second degree murder charge? Do you think we would have seen that without the protest? Do you, do you think that the protest led to the charges? Well, based on the precedents uh, with Eric Gordon and so many others, no, I don't think we would have saw those charges. But understand, Craig, there is evidence for these charges. There were always evidence of many of these cases when they, white police kill black people. They just never get charged. I, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the, the memorial today at, at 1 o'clock. Um, what more can you tell us about what that's going to look like? How is George Floyd going to be remembered there? Well, it's going to be a celebration of life, but it's also going to be a plea to America and a plea for justice that we don't let his death be in vain. We have a lot of uh, high-profile people coming. We want everybody to use their voices, Craig, to say no more. We're tired of dying at the hands of the people who are supposed to protect us. How many interviews have we done, Craig, like this, where unarmed black people have been killed unjustifiably, unnecessarily, and senselessly, and it keeps happening? The body cam uh, footage, uh, I know you haven't seen all of it. You've only seen the snippets in, in the police report. Should that video be, be made public? Should it be released? Absolutely, Craig. If we're talking about uh, building trust between communities of color and law enforcement, it should be transparency. We need transparency, accountability. That's the only way we can get the trust. I, um, I read something yesterday, um, and I want to ask you about it, because I believe it was one of George Floyd's brothers who said that he did not want, he did not want George Floyd reduced to a T-shirt. He didn't want his, his, his brother to be reduced to a, a logo. Mm -hmm. How's the, how is the family holding up in all of this? How are they doing? Very emotional. That was Felonis Floyd, who's going to speak at the memorial today. And he said, you know, he remembered his brother right here watching a video for almost nine minutes. His brother saying, I can't breathe. And he ends up calling for their mama. I mean, in a desperate plea before he dies. And so what Filonis is saying to the world is we don't want this to be in vain. We want a conviction and we want systematic reform to prevent this from happening to other black people and other brothers and parents so their children can grow up with their fathers. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for your time. And uh, please pass along um, our regards to the family. Okay. Today. I'll introduce you to them today. Thank you. Um, we want to mention, by the way, that NBC News will have live coverage of today's memorial uh, with Lester Holt, who's also here in Minneapolis tonight. Lester is going to be anchoring a primetime special. It's called America in Crisis. We'll look at the current mood of the country, the push for justice that Ben just mentioned, and some ways to heal this divide. That's it. At 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central.